Hi, this is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial, bringing you more useful tips to help improve our environment. I'm at the New York Botanical Garden today, and it's a gorgeous day in early September. And behind me is a display of wonderful grasses. Most of them are actually native. If you're planting a prairie or a meadow or a prairie scape or meadowscape, uh, gardens that have the elements of those uh, different ecosystems, and they can be quite small, you really want to consider native grasses as an important component. Component. Now, a typical prairie or meadow is going to have anywhere from 40 to 60 percent native grasses as a structural element both above ground and below ground. And these native grasses do a lot more than that. They're very, very deep rooted. Uh, these prairie grasses are quite amazing compared to turf grass, which I'm standing on here, has a very shallow root system, whereas these native grasses are quite deeply rooted. And that's a big boon when you have stormwater runoff issues, as we probably will have more and more so with climate change um, bringing us more flooding. So not only do they provide that wonderful structure, but they also provide habitat uh, for many creatures as well as seeds for birds. The flowers that you see on these grasses um, will feed a lot of hungry birds. And some of our native grasses are even host plants for some uh, Lepidoptera, specifically some skippers. So think about native uh, grasses when you're thinking about your garden. They're all sorts of sizes, small like this one, um, and quite tall. And we'll take a look at some other examples. This beautiful little grass is little bluestem, Schizocarium scoparium. Now this is a grass that's also a deep-rooted prairie grass and is found widely throughout the United States. It does quite well in home gardens, but keep in mind that these native grasses really don't like a lot of organic matter. They kind of like lean soil in full sun. Now this grass will go to seed and provide a food source for birds and some mammals. And also this is another host plant for skippers. It's an important little plant and there are many selections now. This one is, is carousel, but there are many selections that are coming to market, including one I really like called prairie munchkin that's an upright small form that can be used very easily in a container. This plant behind me is prairie drop seed, Sporobolus heterolepis. And this is a plant that's native to a great portion of the United States. It's even native here in New York. It has beautiful flowers and yes, grasses do have flowers uh, in the fall that will feed a lot of hungry birds. So consider this as one of your native grass choices. Let's take a look at some others. Another short native grass is this lovely one, tufted hair grass, Dyschampsia cespitosa. This particular selection is gold towel, and it's really a sweet little grass, again with these beautiful fall flowers. And uh, I'd make an argument it could work really well in a container as well as in your garden. So. Don't limit yourself when you're thinking about using native grasses. Let's take an, a look at another one that works well. Native switchgrass is another great selection of native grasses to use in our landscapes. And uh, the botanical name of this is Panicum virgatum. There are many different cultivars, many different selections, usually um, with showy colors like this one. This particular cultivar is called Cheyenne Sky. The beautiful flowers uh, will feed birds with the seeds that are offered in the uh, fall and winter. And like all native grasses, keep them standing through winter to provide some habitat and some food resources for overwintering creatures. One grass I'm really happy not to see here at the New York Botanical Garden is Miscanthus sinensis, Chinese silver grass. That's a grass that uh, has been used widely in horticulture and often still sold at garden centers and nurseries. It's a very aggressive grass that outcompetes our native plants. And for a while, it was thought that a lot of the cultivars, a lot of the selections of the uh, Chinese silver grass were actually sterile, but uh, research has proven that they really really aren't. So when thinking grasses, think native. This is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial. Thanks for watching. For more useful tips, please visit www.ecobeneficial.com. <music>